KNBC 9 News at 4 starts now. Hitting pause again, the Jackson County Legislature is holding off on a stadium sales tax vote, the impending deadline, if they want the Chiefs and Royals to stick around. But first, Kansas City is getting ready to celebrate the new year. Good evening. I'm Jackson Kurtz. And I'm Jamie Weiss. Laura and Kelly have the night off. Party preparations are already underway all over the metro. KNBC 9's Peyton Headley is joining us live inside Jay Rieger & Co. just to get you prepared to ring in 2024. Hey, Peyton. Yeah, hey, and there's a lot of gold in here, and that is because they're going for a 24 karat gold ring in to start off. 2024 and you can see the decor this is just one of the rooms this specifically is where the body glitter bar will go but they have all different kinds of entertainment planned for the weekend they have a live dj live music photo opportunities and other performers roaming around the rooms as well they say this is their biggest party of the year they're hoping for about 700 people on new year's eve they did say the chiefs game earlier in the day could affect how people choose to celebrate if at all but regardless they're looking forward to a fun night this year is our biggest we've ever done, um, and it takes a lot of prep and planning. So we start like in August to get the theme ready, and then our team is here now setting up, and then we'll continue to set up the next 24 to 48 hours. A lot of work ahead. If you want to come, tickets are $150, but it is an open bar, and you get some food here as well. Live in Kansas City, Peyton Headley, KNBC 9 News. All right, thanks, Peyton. Kind of love that theme idea, 24 karat. 24 karat, karat. got to stay gold for the new year. <laughs> I love that, but here's the thing. I think a lot of people might be making their New Year's plans based off the weather. And the Chiefs. First yeah. alert meteorologist yes. Neville Miller joins us now. Neville, what does New Year's weather forecast look like for You us? know, it actually doesn't look bad. It's going to be a little chilly, so make sure you've got that warmer coat if you're trying to figure out, hey, what am I going to wear if you're going to the game, if you're going out uh, Sunday night. You want to make sure you have those warmer layers on. Here's how things are going to shape up as far as future scan goes. We're just going to have some patchy clouds. You don't need to worry about rain or snow on Sunday. The temperatures, at least during the day, we get back into the mid 30s, so it will be a chilly end to 2023. 35 or high temperature, 20s off to our north, 40s and 50s to our south. So we'll definitely have a chill in the air. And as far as what to expect for your evening plans, around dinner time will be near 30 degrees, blustery, but we're dry. So no rain or snow to worry about there. Heading out, so if you're going out maybe like 8 or 9 o'clock, we'll be at 28 degrees, feeling more like 18. And that's why I'm recommending that winter coat. Just kind of keep that in mind. For how you want to dress uh, Sunday night and then heading home that wind chill at 16 the actual temperature of 26 so chilly and dry as we head into your Sunday night I'll let you know how the new year will start out that's coming up all right Neville thank you'd rather stay home on New Year's Eve you can party with us Dick Clark's New Year's Rockin' Eve with Ryan Seacrest starts at 7 p.m. right here on KNBC 9 celebrate the new year across the country from Times Square to right here in Kansas City at midnight and you can watch KNBC 9 news at 9 p.m. on KNBC that's all right here on Channel 9 ahead in 30 minutes things are changing in Times Square the added security being put in place this New Year's Eve the Jackson County Legislature has once again put the stadium sales tax decision on hold. KMC 9's Dennis Evans attended this morning's meetings. He's live outside the sports complex. And Dennis, this has happened before too. Yes, it has, Jackson. This is the second time that county officials were scheduled to discuss the stadium tax and try to get the language right to get it approved, to put it before voters. And for the second time, it has been tabled. About 20 people showed up today at this meeting and they were there to hear what they thought was going to be a discussion of the sales tax. Instead, the topic was put on hold while the county continues to try to get things sorted out. Now, the tax extension would help the Royals finance a new stadium and also provide money for the Chiefs to possibly fix up Arrowhead Stadium. The legislators that I spoke with say they are close, but there's still some details that need to be worked out. Our object here at the county and as a county legislator for me is that we not only represent and keep the teams in mind, but we also have to keep in mind our 830,000 residents throughout Jackson County. This is not just one side fits all. It's not one uh, idea fits all. It has to be a community effort to get this done. Now, there was a group of concerned citizens that were inside the chambers today waiting to hear what was going to happen in this meeting. They want to make sure that there is a community benefits element to this to make sure that the people who live in downtown, which is one of the potential places for a stadium, that they get some benefit from this as well. 
they, the legislature says they really still think this is something to do, but there is a long, long road ahead to try to get all of this worked out. Live from the stadium, Dennis Evans, KBC 9 News. All right, thanks for staying on top of this, Dennis. And the county is hoping to have that approval process completed in early January. Then it'll be on the voters' ballot in April. Adding to this, the county is still experiencing some pushback from the property assessments process. Right now, about 40,000 appeals have been resolved. About 14,000 are still left. The deadline to pay is this Sunday. KBC 9 has been investigating this problem since viewers started reaching out to us months ago. To see all of our previous reports, you can go to KMBC.com and search assessment. Well, police and Liberty are asking for the help from public's help finding four people involved in recent retail thefts. The department posted this photo on Facebook. There are two women and two men. Police did not say where these thefts happened. If you know anything, call the tips hotline at 816-474-TIPS. And we have another update to the Liberty Hospital computer disruptions. Hospital officials confirmed the disruptions were due to hackers. Now, as a result, the hospital took its entire computer network offline and has now implemented additional security protocols. An investigation is underway, but the hospital is still unsure if any patient data was compromised. We'll let you know of any updates. Well, the Bengals are back in action against the Chiefs on Sunday, and even without Joe Burrow as QB, they could still pose a threat. The Chiefs could clinch the AFC West if they can win this game, and a key player could be back on the field in time to make it happen. Isaiah Pacheco has been out of practice because of concussion protocol, but head coach Andy Reid says he got some reps in today. He practiced today, which is under you know part of that protocol. We have to see how he did after today, but. Um, you know, just from talking to him out there, he, he did well during the practice, but we got to do the, you know, there's more to it than that. So, If you're hoping to snag a ticket to Sunday's game, here's a check on ticket prices. Stub Hub seat start at $107, SeatGeek starts at $108, and Ticketmaster starts at $165. Kickoff is at $325. Coming up in about 35 minutes, we're going to hear from Big Rat again. His opinion on all the smack talk coming from Cincinnati. I want to give you a quick check of your drive times on this Friday afternoon. Downtown to Overland Park running you 12 minutes. Downtown to Lee Summit, 20 minutes. And downtown to Belton, a 22-minute drive. You are going to be just on time. Updates from overseas. The town Gaza refugees are now taking shelter in and the Russian attack on several Ukrainian cities overnight. The former president's battle to stay on the ballot comes to another state. The decision in Maine. Plus, a handy tool you can use at the airport is being made right here, the local factory behind this baggage helper. Your station leading the way with First Alert Weather, Kansas City's largest, most experienced team, KMBC 9 News.
All right, we had some clouds this morning, then that sunshine came out and we are seeing sunshine area wide and it has warmed us up pretty nicely. Well into the 40s really for most areas, even a few spots at 50 degrees earlier today. Right now we're at 44, so you still want that warmer coat if you do have to head out. We have a light northwest breeze at 9 miles an hour. Looking ahead for your evening plans, you will want the winter coat. We're going to cool back into those 30s for the, your evening plans. We're going out to dinner, 37 degrees at 6 o'clock, 34 at 8, below freezing by 10 o'clock this evening. We'll have that clear sky, dry weather here for the remainder of your Friday. Looking ahead into the weekend, we get some sunshine. We also are going to see some more clouds move in and we'll get another shot of chillier air. And I'll let you know what that means for your Chiefs game day forecast. That's in about five minutes. Right now in Gaza, thousands are taking shelter in tents. Many fled to the south when Israel started its airstrikes. This video is from the southern part of Rafa. This is one of the spots where aid is coming through, and right now Israel is focusing its fighting in the center of Gaza. 1,200 Israelis were killed when Hamas attacked on October 7th. Hamas says more than 21,000 Palestinians have been killed. That number takes both civilians and Hamas militants into account. In Ukraine, officials say Russia's largest attack came overnight, where six major cities were hit. And that includes Kyiv, the capital city. 26 people are dead. Several others are hurt. This attack hit things like a shopping center and maternity hospital. In D.C., a group of senators are restarting negotiations aimed at sending more aid to Ukraine and Israel. Maine is the latest state to tackle the 14th Amendment, their decision to keep Trump off the ballot and his response. And right now, people are scrambling to get their New Year's destinations. We're checking in on KCI and around the country. Plus, making your airport visit easier. The piece of equipment coming from a Kansas plant. Your station leading the way, keeping you safe by exposing scams, fraud, and recalls. KNBC 9 News. Right now, people are making it to their New Year's destinations. No matter where you're celebrating 2024, expect busy travel today and tomorrow. We want to take a live look at the roads outside of KCI. This is I-29 at Cookingham Drive, and honestly, it looks like pretty smooth sailing. We took a look at flykc.com and only saw a couple of delays. Those include a flight to Cancun and another one to Austin, Texas. And peak road traffic is expected to go down after 7 o'clock tonight. And as far as today in the air today, traffic controllers were predicting to handle 43,000 flights. We've been through it before. Uh, we have a command center in Virginia that really looks at the entire system where there's potentially weather, where there are delays. We communicate with the airlines and, and make sure we're running as smoothly as possible. 
AAA expected 7.5 million passengers to fly over the holidays. The busiest times of travel tomorrow are between 5 and 8 p.m. Now there's a good chance the next time you get on a plane and look out your window, you'll see electric vehicles handling your luggage. KBC 9's Alan Shope shows us the KCK company that might have something to do with it. When lithium batteries came out, we said, you know what? We want to be the forefront runners. And Jamie Kaplan and Casey based Harlan Global did just that. We have a big fleet in Canada running. We have them in Saudi Arabia running. Jamie hopes more U.S. carriers start getting interested in EV tractors. Their job totes your bags around the airport to different planes as you travel. Right now, most are still gas. Airports are one of the major polluters, and one place they can be clean that's easier than the airplanes is the ground support equipment. Jamie says the Kansas City company is taking older tractors and adding their conversion kits to make them lithium powered vehicles by 20 30 50 percent of the airports will all be electric on the ground side and maybe by 2035 90 percent will Harlan put out 50 of the tractors this year and so far they have more than 200 in the market Atlanta's using a lot Charlotte they're using a lot of electric as for KCI Jamie says the new airport terminal is not set up for lithium charging just yet he says when more United States airports and carriers learn more about the technology Kansas City will be booming. Definitely will be bringing lots of new jobs to Kansas City because there are thousands of these out there in the market. In Kansas City, Kansas, Alan Shope, KNBC 9 News. The company says they first started looking into lithium battery technology and airport tractors back in 2014. They hope to double their electric tractor output by the end of next year. Now it's going to check on your drive home. Johnny Rollins is up in News Chopper 9, keeping an eye on things for us. Johnny, how are you seeing any backups today? Uh, not seeing very many at all. Of course, this is uh, the eve of Christmas Eve of Christmas, not Christmas, but New Year's Eve, but, uh, two or three of those. Anyway, uh, so we didn't really see much of a rush hour this morning and not seeing a lot of cars on the road this afternoon. Nonetheless, we have a, an accident working here. It might be two separate wrecks. Uh, several vehicles here. Can't tell which ones are the police, but uh, they are there. Again, northbound 435 at State Avenue, and then we take it up a little bit further and a few more cars up here. So don't know the circumstances or really if those two wrecks are related, but it would be pretty coincidental if they weren't. Regardless, no backup behind this whatsoever. Johnny Rollins, News Chopper 9, back to you in the studio. All right, Johnny, thank you. The former president is now off the ballot in two states. Maine ruled Donald Trump ineligible for the primary ballot. And Maine joins Colorado in this historic decision. Both are citing the Constitution's insurrection clause. That's the 14th Amendment. In Colorado, the state Supreme Court decided, and in Maine, it was their Secretary of State. No Secretary of State has ever deprived a candidate of ballot access under Section 3 of the 14th Amendment. But no presidential candidate has ever engaged in an insurrection. Section 3 bars anyone who swore an oath to defend the Constitution and engaged in insurrection or rebellion from holding certain offices in the federal government. Trump's campaign is vowing to appeal. We're keeping you safe with news of a Walmart recall. It applies to 4,200 of the Relax 5 millimeter science kit. Now, there are concerns the metal balls could cause deadly injuries to children. They were sold exclusively on Walmart.com. The balls are magnetically stronger than what is allowed, so if your child swallows them, they could attach to each other inside the digestive system. Well, mortgage rates have dropped for the ninth week in a row. A 30-year fixed rate mortgage fell to 6.61%. Last week, it was 667 The Federal Reserve is expected to cut interest rates in the new year. That is contributing to the drop over the last two months. Well, SpaceX is celebrating a successful launch. Its Falcon Heavy rocket has returned to the skies. It lifted off from NASA's Kennedy Space Center. Engine full power and liftoff. The rocket was carrying the military's X-37B space plane. Keep in mind, there is no crew on it. It's unclear where that space plane is going, but this launch came after two weeks of delays. Exclusive live radar and nine-day forecast, so you'll know first. This is First Alert I'm a total Weather. I'm geek for anything space. I, I just I love all it's that. It's just amazing. It no, really is. No man on there, or woman on there, so that's pretty cool. Just sending it I'm on I'm just up. so impressed, and you know what? They're going to get a good view of the sun, which we finally amazing. got to see Amazing. It hit your face. It did. Magic. Just had so much energy. Went for a run outside today. Oh. Just, there you uh, go. It, it just Was really it warm enough? Like, I no. think so. <laughs> For me, just having the sun made the yeah. difference, you know, just really made it feel so much nicer out there. Let's take a look around the region. I want to show you what's going on. So that big storm system that really had been kind of just 
paying rent, hanging out here over the past week. Well, now it is off to the east. So as you head more so in eastern Missouri, Illinois, the Ohio Valley, down to parts of Tennessee, northern Alabama and Mississippi, that's where all the clouds are. We actually have some clearing and as you look off to the north and west, it kind of looks like there's more clouds, but this is actually snow on the ground over most of Nebraska up into South Dakota. And for us, we have that clear sky. We have that sunshine overhead. Currently, we have the sunny sky. We're at 44 degrees, so warmer than we've been. Uh, we have that wind chill at 39, so you still want the warmer coat if you do have to head out for the remainder of the afternoon or for the evening. 43 in Liberty, 45 degrees in Lee Summit, 45 for Olathe, closer to 50 degrees for Lawrence and Ottawa. Evening plans, wind chills will start cooling down into the 20s. Actual air temperatures in the low to mid 30s. Chilly, clear, quiet for your Friday evening plans as far as the weather goes. Heading into the morning tomorrow, we'll start the day off with temperatures in the upper 20s. So a little bit chillier than we've been over the last several mornings, right around 28 degrees for our morning temperature in Kansas City. From there, we're going to see kind of a mix of clouds and sun tomorrow. Partly cloudy in the morning, more clouds will drift in mid to late morning into about the early afternoon, about two or three. Then we'll start clearing back out for the latter part of the afternoon. So sunshine, clouds, and we're back in the sunshine again tomorrow. Temperatures will be back in the mid 40s once again. So chilly in the morning, not so bad as we get into the afternoon. Here are those forecast highs, about 46 in Kansas City, about the same for Lee Summit, Liberty and Olathe, a little warmer for Lacine and Garnett. On Sunday, a cold front sweeps through, so that means colder temperatures for the area, middle 30s for highs. So it's going to feel more like late December for our last day of December here. 35 or high temperature in Kansas City, and really most of the area will be in those middle 30s for highs. More clouds will drift in, then we'll see some clearing. So as far as our sky conditions, Saturday and Sunday will have kind of similar things going on there. Some clouds, some sun. Temperatures do cool off again for your Sunday afternoon. So if you're heading out to the game, that 325 kickoff, big game against the Bengals, you already know that. 30 degrees for tailgating, 34 a kickoff, but feeling more like 25 because of that northwest wind. Wind chills down in those lower 20s heading home. Temperature wise, we're right around the freezing mark. We're dry, so you don't need to worry about rain or snow for the game. If you have plans Sunday evening for New Year's Eve, we're going to be fine as well. Again, that cheese forecast things look OK, so just make sure you wear those red layers. New Year's Day, a high of 37. We'll start things out in the lower 20s. From there, we'll have highs next week in the upper 30s to lower 40s, lows down in the 20s, and as of right now, looking dry for the next nine days. All right, Neville, thank you. Google is releasing the top health questions its search engine took care of this year. And these questions are from January to November, so December is not included. But the top search? How long is strep contagious? And then the next one is how contagious is strep throat? Seeing a theme here. Other top searches are how to lower cholesterol and what helps bloating. And people tend to make New Year's resolutions centered around health, but having a healthy mindset, it's important too. It is. It can help you break old habits and create new ones. And it can distract you from focusing on the negatives. It helps to shift how you view yourself. We're kinder to ourselves. We're using more encouragement and gratitude uh, that does go a long way in terms of how we approach those sources of stress and those obstacles in our day-to-day -day life. Amen to that. An important tool to keeping up that healthy mindset is gratitude. Appreciate the good things and recognize the choice you, you have when responding to stress. Now here's the latest drive times this afternoon. Downtown to KCI is 19 minutes. Downtown to Liberty is just 12 minutes. Downtown to Bonner Springs is 15 minutes. Now here's a look at what's coming up at 430. In just two minutes, we're getting a look at one Kansas woman's tradition, the thousands of Christmas cards she's written by hand. In the six minutes, New Year's Eve security. The added measures in place at Times Square with U.S. threats rising. And in 10 minutes, the Salvation Army is celebrating a success. The helpful fundraising tool it's using this time around.
One Kansas woman isn't letting her age stop her from spreading holiday cheer. She lives in McPherson, which is about an hour north of Wichita, but her letters that she writes make it much further than that. God bless you and keep you safe is my prayer for you. Drive on Mary, McPherson, Kansas. Every Christmas, Mary Peterson sends these unique handwritten cards to the men and women who serve our country. And it's not just a few of them. I think I only had 7,000 the first year, but then I had 8,000 last year and 8,000 again this year. Mary has sent nearly 24,000 cards to military members all around the world since she started in 2020. There are so many heartaches and broken homes and people went to the service because it was some place, something else for them to do, you know, to get, and uh, they won't hear from family because they've, they've lost their connection. Mary says when she was in high school, her older brother served overseas and she wrote him every single week. Later, her husband fought in World War II, so she knows very well how lonely the holidays can be for folks in the military. I've got all these right down there, are 25 ready to go. Mary says every year, community members donate thousands of these blank cards. After she's done, she takes them to the Fort Riley Army Base. From there, the letters get sent to active duty members in different parts of the world. The 96-year-old says as long as God keeps her hands steady enough to write, she'll never stop sending these letters. I hope it makes them realize that there's somebody that still loves them and loves what they're doing. If you're wondering how the math works out on all those letters, Mary has to start writing them in the middle of the summer. She says she averages about 50 per day. It's awesome. Still to come, getting you prepared for New Year's Eve, the added security you could see at Times Square when watching at home. And in five minutes, first alert meteorologist Neville Miller returns with a look at your forecast, the number of layers you're going to want for your New Year's plans if they're outdoors. station leading the way with coverage of what's happening right now and what's next KNBC 9 news here's a look at what's happening right now North Dakota is in a state of emergency from a Christmas Day ice storm the governor declared it today thousands are still without power this will free up federal aid to help cover the cost of repairing hundreds of utility pools and right now in Ohio the Republican governor is breaking from the pack he vetoed a measure that would have banned gender affirming care for minors other GOP leaders have been in support of measures like this. However, he did announce plans to ban transgender surgeries until people turn 18. And right now in New York City, Times Square is preparing for its New Year's Eve crowd. Officials are ramping up security before the big event. It comes at a time the U.S. is under more threats with the war in the Middle East in its third month. And even if you won't be in the city, you'll be watching the celebration on TV most likely. ABC's Rena Roy shows us how police are preparing to keep everyone safe. Times Square in New York City transforms into the biggest party in the world every New Year's Eve. And the NYPD says they're prepared for anything. Thousands of officers getting ready to deploy across the area. This is our Super Bowl. We plan for it all year long. Police planning to expand their security perimeter as they look for anything out of place or any suspicious people. They'll be using dogs, drones, and spectator checkpoints. We know how to safeguard events of this size. Uh, we have major events going on at one time in the city, and with the collaboration of all of our agencies and organizations, we get it right and we do it right all the time. There are no specific or credible threats, but a federal assessment obtained by ABC News says the celebration is an attractive target for foreign terrorists, homegrown violent extremists, and lone wolves. 
Authorities citing a heightened threat environment as the war rages on between Israel and Hamas. Already this year, demonstrators tried to disrupt other iconic holiday events in the city, the Thanksgiving parade and the tree lighting. And last year, police say a man from Maine attacked NYPD officers with a knife at a security checkpoint near Times Square. Despite the heightened tensions right now, the NYPD is still encouraging people to come out and enjoy themselves, but also reminding everyone, as they often do, if you see something, say something. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. Coming up on KMBC 9 News at 5, Peyton Headley returns with a look at your options. Here, the bar is giving you places to ring in the new year in the metro. And as you look ahead to the new year, it's important to reflect on stories that have changed Kansas City this year. So much has happened. KMBC 9's Cody Holick explores the milestones, both good and bad, this week on Heart of the Matter. Here we are at the end of another busy year. We've been through a lot together in 2023. Some of the highest highs, including another Chiefs championship, some time in the national spotlight, a new airport terminal turning heads. But the lows also can't be ignored. Heartbreak, record violence in Kansas City, unrest here at home because of Israel's war overseas. Politics also moved from capitals to classrooms as major social issues and campaign promises came to a head. This week on Heart of the Matter, we'll discuss it all, diving into the moments that define 2023 as we look ahead to what we can expect in the new year. We'll see you then. And don't miss a special New Year's edition of Heart of the Matter Sunday at 11 a.m. on KMBC 9. Now to first alert weather with meteorologist Neville Miller. And Neville, there's so much happening this week, and we got a Chiefs game, uh, right. New Year's Eve. Yep. Um, how many layers? Because I'm thinking like 12. Okay, okay, okay so you're kind of <laughs> rounding up there with 12. You know, it's a lot, but uh, it'll be chilly. So, you know, whatever you need to stay warm, wear those layers for your plans, especially if you're going to be out at the GHA field at Arrowhead because it'll be chilly. You're going to be out there for several hours. Highs on Sunday, so your daytime highs, middle 30s, but the wind chills are going to be down in the 20s during the afternoon. So as far as what that looks like for that Chiefs game day forecast, that 325 kickoff, 34 the air temperature, but feeling more like it's about 25. We will have some sun and some clouds, and then fourth quarter, 32 degrees that wind chill down in the lower 20s. So that's why you want to make sure you've got plenty of red layers if you're heading out to the game and then for your New Year's Eve Sunday evening plans. And if you're trying to get dressed up, make sure you've got that warm coat to go with your outfit because we'll be at 30 degrees for dinner, but then 28 heading out, maybe eight, nine o'clock ish wind chills in those upper teens and heading home in the new year. Our temperatures will start cooling back into the middle 20s. Wind chills down in the mid teens and by your Sunday overnight, we'll see our lows dipping down into the lower 20s. So a chilly end to 2023 and to start 2024. I'll let you know when some even colder air could push in. That's coming up. All right, thanks, Neville. Kansas City has stepped up this giving season. Generous donors have pushed the Salvation Army so close to meeting its red cattle goal. KMBC 9's Rob Hughes shows us the useful tool that's increasing donations. Over the last few days, Kansas Cityans have come together and donated over $120,000 towards the Salvation Army's Red Kettle campaign. Now, Salvation Army is now just $80,000 short of meeting their $800,000 goal. And a big game changer this year has been the tip tap devices. Those are the ones you might have seen that let you use your credit or your debit card to make a donation. Well, they were rolled out citywide for the first time this year. And Salvation Army leaders tell us that they've seen a tenfold increase in giving year to year, including over $50,000 in donations using those tip tap devices. And officials say they are grateful for the community's generosity. Just knowing the mission and what it is that the Salvation Army does year round, uh, not really surprising that uh, we would uh, receive a little bit extra attention at the end of the year from uh, our, our neighbors in Kansas City. The campaign runs through the end of the year this Sunday. You can donate using those tip tap devices. You can also go online to lovebeyondkc.org. Make a donation there. And as always, to support the Salvation Army's mission, check out their website, salarmymocan.org. In Kansas City, Missouri, I'm Rob Hughes, KMBC 9 News. And if you would like to volunteer, just go to centralusa.salvationarmy.org. Well, Kansans, your grocery bill is expected to drop at the start of the new year. Food sales taxes drop from 4 to 2% in 2024. They'll be removed entirely in 2025. The state predicts Kansans will save $150 million next year. Also in Kansas, a lingering security issue is limiting access to all court cases. A cyber attack crippled the system in October. Some systems are back up and running. There's no final word on when it will all be back online. Right now, you have to make an appointment and you have to walk into the 
Judicial Center in Topeka to get access to any information. You can also go to counties that have regained access. We know Johnson County runs its own system. It was not affected by the attack. If you recently got a ticket from the Kansas Highway Patrol, you're going to want to listen out. The Douglas County DA's office says the court date might be wrong on it. Drivers who got a ticket with a court appearance set for today are actually due in court on Friday, January 26th. It is time to check in with News Chopper 9's Johnny Rollins. Johnny, how's the drive looking on this Friday evening? It's uh, not just any Friday evening. It's before the holiday weekend, the second holiday weekend in a row for uh, New Year's, New Year's Eve coming up here in a couple of days, and uh, that means a lot fewer, uh, if that makes any sense, kind of a, a double negative there or something, but there are fewer uh, people on the roads for sure. 71 Highway on down to uh, I-49, it's the Bruce Watkins Drive taking you past 87th Street, 83rd, and on down to Bannister, looking good through there. On the way over to check out a wreck, though, in Lee Summit, reported to be 50 Highway at 470. It sounds like several vehicles involved, but no injuries. With the light traffic, it'll be interesting to see if there's any kind of a backup, and we'll be on top of that for you pretty soon. Johnny Rollins, News Chopper 9, back to you in the studio. Thanks, Johnny. Here's a look at your drive times for this Friday afternoon. Downtown to Olathe, just 19 minutes. Downtown to Liberty, 13 minutes. While downtown to Blue Springs, running you 18 minutes, a normal drive time for you as you're heading out the door. Caught in a Christmas Day crash, but this Florida family's gifts were still saved. The heartwarming efforts from first responders. Getting answers on military misconduct, the changes coming to the investigation process. Plus, will we see redemption from the Chiefs on Sunday? The outlook from head coach Andy Reid. Your station leading the way, getting you prepared for important events and changes that affect your day. KMBC 9 News. All right, we had some sunshine this afternoon, really made for a nice day, a relatively warm day compared to what we've had uh, really over this past week. Our highs have mostly been in the 30s, and right now we're still mainly in those middle 40s. We're at 44 in Parkville, same for Overland Park, 45 in Olathe, 45 for Lee Summit, Independence, 44 degrees for you. As far as your evening plans go, the sun's going to be setting here in about 30 minutes, and once the sun goes down, our temperatures will cool down to the 30s pretty quickly. 34 degrees heading towards 8 o'clock this evening. That mostly clear sky, west-northwest wind at 5 to 10. That's going to knock those wind chills down into the upper 20s. So make sure you have your winter coat for your evening plans. Looking ahead, I'm keeping an eye on some colder air that will make its way down into the region. I'll let you know when it's going to feel even more like winter. That's coming up. A group of first responders saved Christmas for one Florida family. They were involved in a serious crash. And all of their Christmas presents got wet. We're going to take them back to the office and spread them out for us. Yeah. We have a ton of stuff. Well, you can see they formed a human chain using a ladder to reach that car. It went off the highway, hit a pole, and rolled into a ditch filled with water. Thankfully, everyone walked away with only minor injuries. Then Mother now has a message for those who helped her. You guys were so kind and patient to me and my kids. All you did was try to calm me down. 
And I want to thank you to continue to work to do what you do, because if it wasn't for you guys, I don't know where I would be right now. Those first responders continue to go above the call of duty. They also gave the family gifts that had been donated. Well, changes are starting right now in the U.S. military. The new way misconduct allegations will be investigated. The Bengals are back in town in two days, but is our offense ready? The improvements Andy Reid says he's seen in practice. And last night in the Pop-Tarts Bowl, K-State was sharing the spotlight. The moment with college football's new mascot. Your station leading the way, getting you answers on the stories that matter most to you and your family. KMBC 9 News. The U.S. military is changing how it investigates sexual misconduct. And it starts this week. The White House says this is the most significant transformation in decades. There were nearly 9,000 reports of sexual assault in the military in 2022's fiscal year. Now, the chain of command will no longer decide what happens to those reports. But we'll have a independent prosecutor to decide whether to bring forth a case or not. So that's big. An advocacy group called Protect Our Defenders has been pushing for this change for more than a decade. The Defense Department says it hopes all of these changes will flag problems faster. Now it's going to check on your drive home. Johnny Rollins is up in News Chopper 9, keeping an eye on things for us. Johnny, have we seen any backups? You mentioned how it wasn't as busy as we thought. Yeah, it's just uh, the old Sunday afternoon walk at the park as far as traffic volume is concerned. But nonetheless, we find ways to run into each other. And here's another one. Westbound 50 Highway. It's the on-ramp, I believe, from 470 eastbound to uh, westbound 50 Highway. And you can see several vehicles involved here, police on the scene. A little bit of a backup through here. Maybe, uh, well, we'll put it as a slowdown. Look at that. Barely slowing down at all. No backup whatsoever. Evidence of uh, how light traffic has been all week long, especially today. So this is not going to be much of a factor for you. Johnny Rollins, News Chopper 9, back to you in the studio. All right, Johnny, thanks. William Jewell's Holiday Classic is continuing through the weekend. And all the action is at the college's Maybe Center. 24 boys basketball teams from Metro High Schools are going to be playing 33 games. A single game pass costs you $10, or you can pay 50 bucks to access the entire tournament. The tournament will end tomorrow. And we need to talk about the Chiefs because when the Bengals come to town, the Chiefs are no strangers to all that smack talk. Andy Reid has a different approach. The Chiefs have a history with the Bengals. We remember Burrowhead, but in the last handful of times we played them, the stakes have been high. The same is true for Sunday, but QB Joe Burrow is out 
Andy Reid says his faith in Mahomes is still there. If the Chiefs win, they clinch the AFC West. But Reid says history won't mean much in the field, and neither will that smack talk. I don't get into all that. I don't know. I mean, you know I'm, I'm, I, I go small ears and let's go play. Two good football teams playing each other. So I, I think that's in there was a history. I mean, we played each other here now how many ever times and over the last couple of years. So it's, uh, you know, there, there's that history with them. Yeah, let's go play. Here are the times you need to know for Sunday's game. Parking gates open at 11. You can start heading to your seat at 1, and kickoff is set for 325. And coming up on KBC 9 News at 5, hear from two players, Willie Gay and NVS, sharing their mindsets for Sunday. And in case you haven't heard, the Wildcats won their bowl game. Yeah, K-State beat North Carolina State 28-19, to and the coach shared an emotional moment with senior Cooper Beebe after. He's... A ring of honor guy, which is a big deal at K-State. He's a great football player. He's a better leader, and he's a better person. Uh, I love you, Coach. I love you so much, Coop. BB actually had the option to opt out of the bowl game and declare for the draft, but he chose to stay. And while the Wildcats had an impressive game, the only thing <laughs> the Internet seems to be talking about, it's been living rent-free in my head since last night, it's a mascot. This pop tart. Everybody yeah. loves this pop tart. This was the first pop tarts bowl, and it came with an interesting and tasty celebration. So the pop tart came down the bottom, and that's that's the mascot. They eat it. Was that the real pop tart guy that kind of came? Yes, yeah. Nacho. It was. <laughs> yes. Wait, hang on. Honestly, I'm a little jealous. There you go. Surprised they didn't eat all of that. Someone yeah. inside the Pop Tart costume was standing on top of that fake toaster just minutes <laughs> before that mega Pop Tart popped out. In case you were wondering, the flavor was strawberry. Oh, it gotta be the, the cherry with the frosting on top. Strawberry is kind of like my third you, favorite. You wanna good. know my favorite part of this though? Cause I have like deep dived on Twitter about this. Okay. When the Pop Tart came out, they were playing Higher by Creed. Oh, and then when it okay. went That's into the toaster, they were playing like getting hot in here because, you know, th they got to get that Pop-Tart ready. By Nelly, hot in here by Nelly. Yeah. Okay, well, K-State yep. got that. Jayhawks <laughs> also won their game. Rock Chalk Jayhawk. Mizzou has M theirs tonight. Come on now. Yep. Kickoff is at 7 o'clock. I'm a KU guy, but, you know, I'm, I'm going to MIZ tonight. I want we'll all it. three of our yes. teams to win. <laughs> yes. We've set a good precedent it. so far. Right, you know, so just down to Mizzou tonight, so we'll see how that goes in the Cotton Bowl. Of course, we're excited about that. And then we got a big game on Sunday. Chiefs, we're talking about that. Chiefs, Bengals. Let me get you that forecast if you're going to be heading out to GEHA Field at Arrowhead. 325, that kickoff. If you're tailgating, it's going to be about 30 degrees, but blustery. A cold front will roll through. So we'll go from the 40s today and tomorrow to only middle 30 Sunday afternoon. So kickoff time about 34 degrees. Wind chills will be down the low to mid 20s. At least we're going to be dry, so you won't need to worry about rain or snow, but you will want to make sure that you've got those warm layers if you're heading out to the game. Currently looking over the plaza, we have sunshine. Really, it's just a nice day out there. 44 degrees, feels more like 39. We got into the middle 40s this afternoon after starting out near the freezing mark. 41 in Liberty, 40 degrees in Leavenworth, about 45 for Olathe. We're hanging out pretty close to 50 degrees in Lawrence. And as far as the wind chills, feels like upper 30s and low 40s. So you do want to make sure you have that warmer coat for your evening plans, especially the later in the evening that you go. We'll be near freezing by 9 o'clock with a wind chill of 27. A clear sky, so chilly, quiet for the evening. A chilly and quiet start to your Saturday as well. Upper 20s to get your Saturday going. We'll be partly cloudy to start the day, but then a few more clouds will drift in mid to late morning, and they're going to kind of hang around just for part of the afternoon. Then we'll see a little more clearing, I'd say mid to late afternoon. So as far as what it looks like on your 12-hour forecast for tomorrow, partly cloudy, upper 20s early, more clouds late morning around lunchtime, low to mid 40s, then clearing back out later in the day, and then we'll start cooling back down into those 30s as we go through your Saturday evening. Highs tomorrow? middle 40. So a little bit above our normal highs for this time of year, which should be right around 39 degrees. We'll be colder on Sunday, as I showed you just a few moments ago, but I, I want to show you kind of the more extended pattern. So we're looking about two weeks out from now. It's going to be more seasonal next week, so typical early January weather. But as we head towards the middle of next month, we'll see a, more of a pattern change that will allow some of the colder air that's been building up to our north in northern parts of Canada, Alaska, some of that really cold air that's been over parts of Siberia. Some of that will try to make its way down 
from Canada into the northern plains and that will have an impact on our temperatures potentially making us colder. Again, that's towards the middle of the month. So you're not going to see that here in the nine day, but towards the middle of next month, we might see more of those days with highs uh, possibly staying below the freezing mark. Nine day forecasts. We don't have any of that on here, but there are some chillier days Sunday and Monday. So New Year's Eve 35 or high temperature. If you have plans that evening will be in the upper or upper to middle 20s wind chills down the teens. So when you're trying to figure out what to wear, make sure you've got that warmer coat with you. We'll start off the new year at 22 degrees and then next week those highs will be near 40 lows in the 20s and we're staying dry all the way through next weekend. Neville, thank you. There's only two days left to enjoy the massive lantern festival at the KC Zoo and Aquarium. Glow Wild is here through Saturday. It features handmade massive steel and silk art pieces. They showcase animals, local landmarks, botanicals, and Asian culture. You can get your tickets right now at KansasCityZoo.org. And don't forget about the lights of the Country Club Plaza. This Kansas City tradition dates back more than 90 years. The Evergy Plaza lights cover 15 city blocks, and the best place to see them is from the Plaza 211 parking garage. It's free and open to the public. The lights will be shining bright through mid-January. And here's the latest drive times home or wherever you're going. Downtown to Olathe, 19 minutes. Downtown to Belton is 21 minutes. And downtown to KCI is 19 minutes. Travel tricks. The Rawson Reports team travels a lot. Stay in a lot of hotel rooms, take a lot of flights, rent a lot of cars. Now we're revealing our personal travel hacks to make your next trip smooth. Well, if you're traveling for New Year's or plan on traveling more in the new year, we want to make it easier for you. Jeff Rawson and his team are sharing the hacks they've learned from traveling. This is the Rawson Reports team. That's me, that's Kelly, and that's Sarah. We travel a lot, and each time we crisscross the country, we learn new travel tricks for ourselves. Let's start with my favorite hotel hack. I don't know about you, but every time I come into a hotel room, I, I always forget something on the way out, right? Because we have our AirPods, we have our car keys, uh, the wife has jewelry, and we what do we do? We throw it on the counter, it's like that, and then I'm, I'm gonna leave something behind. This is really cool, right? This thing right here, it's a little soft tray that you can buy. It actually comes flat, so you can pack it flat, and then you just do that. Notice it's a different color, right? Get something colorful, maybe even brighter than this. Drop it down and just put stuff in the tray. That way when you're packing up, right, all you have to do is grab the tray, dump it in and you go. Even a lower cost option, here's a jar of peanut butter. Take off the red cap and just put some stuff in the cap, right? And then 
When you're leaving, this is gonna stand out. You're not gonna forget this. But check out this next trick. Got to your vacation spot too early to check in? Need a place to stash your bags? Sarah uses this app, it's called Bounce. So I just got off my train and my Airbnb is not quite ready yet and I need a place to store my luggage. I'm going to use this app called Bounce. They partner with local businesses like a hair salon, a restaurant, a deli, even a convenience store, and you can pre-book where you're gonna stay. So right now, I pre-booked a deli that's right near my Airbnb, and they charge you one flat rate per bag. I'm gonna use my Apple Pay, but you can use PayPal, Google Pay, even a credit card, and then you have a place to store your stuff. The app even vets each location to make sure items are safe and offers a $10,000 insurance guarantee for your stuff. But this last trick from Kelly is a game changer. Checking a bag with Delta Airlines, if your luggage takes longer than 20 minutes to get to the baggage claim, you get bonus miles. On one of her last flights, she tested it out. As you can see, we're at the gate. I've started my timer. Let's go get my bag. She makes her way to baggage claim and waits and waits. It's been like over a half hour. The carousel isn't moving. I've checked the board like eight times to make sure I have the right one. I'm at the right spot. Nothing. She finally gets her bag after 39 minutes. That was a long wait. You just submit your name, Sky Miles number, and flight information on this Bags on Time form on the Delta website. Do it within three days after your flight's arrival, and boom, 2,500 bonus miles for you. And don't forget, airlines are supposed to compensate you for things you need to buy if your luggage is lost or delayed. Think about toiletries or clothes just to get through the day until they can get the luggage back to you. Just visit this page right here from the U.S. Department of Transportation if that happens to you. And we're going to post that link and more of my team travel tricks on my website as well. That's here too. RossonReports.com. Back to you. A little boy gets a big surprise from his favorite quarterback next at five. See what happens when the cameras are rolling and Patrick Mahomes walks through the door. That's next on KMBC 9 News at 5.